Hello friends, welcome to yet another brand new episode of Khel Stories. This week, we are going to share a story on one of the biggest and richest sporting leagues in the whole world. A cricket league which can give serious competition to the likes of EPL and La Liga. Ask any Indian cricket fan about the origin of the IPL. I can guarantee you that 9 out of 10 fans will attribute IPL's origin to the historic 2007 T20 World Cup win and the emergence of the Rebel Indian Cricket League ICL under ex-chairman of Z Entertainment Subhas Chandra. Khel stories can assure you that this is just 50% of the case. Just think for a bit. India won the T20 World Cup in September 2007 and ICL was inaugurated in November 2007. The first match of IPL was played in April 2008. Now, do you really think that a large-scale tournament like IPL could have been planned and organized within just 7 to 8 months? This is where our Kale Stories episode steps in and takes you through the journey of planning and execution of the IPL. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Back in 1983, when India won the first Cricket World Cup, a 19-year-old boy from a Gujarat family went to the US for pursuing electrical engineering and business administration. He failed to complete either of the two degrees. On top of that, this guy was arrested on charges of conspiracy to traffic cocaine, assault and second-degree kidnapping in North Carolina. This guy is the hero of our story and he is none other than Lalit Modi. In case you are wondering how does higher studies in US or drug charges have any relation with IPL, just hang on for a bit. While Lalit Modi was a total failure in academics in US, he did manage something which ultimately changed the dynamics of cricket forever. When he was in Duke University, he followed the NBA closely. He was mesmerized by the business model of NBA. The glamour, the revenue, the franchise-based team ideas all originated in Modi's mind back in 1985, courtesy of NBA. Modi returned to India in 1986, not with any engineering or business degree, but with an idea that is worth around 7 billion US dollars now. After returning to India, Lalit Modi joined his family's business. In 1994, he formed Modi Network Entertainments using money from Family Trust. This entertainment company entered into a partnership with ESPN in 1994. At that time, BCCI had chosen ESPN as the broadcasting media for Indian cricket matches. The goal was clear from the very beginning. Modi wanted to get into the business side of sports. In 1995, Lalit Modi pitched his idea for a new 50-over tournament to BCCI. He even registered a name Indian Cricket League Limited for the proposed league. His idea was to register 8 city-based franchisee teams. ESPN would broadcast all the matches and Modi Entertainment Network would pay additional royalty fee to BCCI. However, the BCCI did not take the proposal seriously and laughed it off. But the hero of a story did not give up so easily. Being an astute businessman, Modi knew that he needed to enter into the politics of BCCI to gain trust of the board members. It was around 1999 that Lalit Modi decided to join the state cricket associations. After several rounds of planning and plotting and trying his luck in Himachal and Punjab, Modi was able to become the vice president of the Punjab Cricket Association. The very next year, Lalit Modi won the elections of Rajasthan Cricket Association president by just one vote. Using the help of then Rajasthan CM Vasundara Raje, Modi got the Rajasthan Sports Act passed which took away the voting rights of 66 individual members who were going to vote against him. This step was a huge landmark in Modi's career. But politics aside, he also put his business ideas into work and increased the profits of Rajasthan Cricket Board by leaps and bounds. He spent 20 crores in the renovation of cricket grounds, another 7 crores to build state academics. In return, he sold the boundary rope, advertising for as much as 15 lakhs per spot, double the previous cost. Gradually, he was gaining the attention of the BCCI. Finally, in 2005, Lalit Modi played a major role in helping Sharad Power defeat Jagmohan Dalmia in the BCCI presidential elections. As a result, Modi was chosen as the vice president. He once again put his business strategy to work and increased BCCI's revenues by 7 times, touching the $1 billion mark. A man whose idea was once rejected by the BCCI became one of the most valuable members of the same organization within a decade. Now let's move to 2007. India won the inaugural T20 World Cup, which made this format of cricket hugely popular and acceptable among Indian fans. The time was set to launch a cricket league in T20 format. 
बट वेट अ बिट नाउ एंटर्स द विलन ऑफ द स्टोरी इफ एवर देर वॉज वन सुभाष चंद्र द हेड ऑफ एस एस ग्रुप फॉर्म जी स्पोर्ट्स एंड बॉट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ टेन स्पोर्ट्स शेयर they got the broadcasting rights of sri lanka west indies and pakistan cricket matches but failed to secure any of the indian matches despite bidding the highest amount bcci didn't think that z group was experienced enough to handle matches of high caliber refusing to give up subhas chandra formed the indian cricket league in 2007 he was inspired by australian businessman kerry packer's idea of creating a world series cricket in 1977 Subhas wanted to create a private cricket league which would challenge the BCCI as well as ICC in terms of generating revenue and audience. Subhas Chandra roped in several international cricketers like Brian Lara, Chris Cranes, Inzamam and Shane Bond. But BCCI proved to be the biggest hindrance in ICL's path. Faced with the threat of young players joining the ICL, BCCI increased the salaries of domestic players and the prize money of the domestic tournaments. Banning Indian players like Ambati Raidu who took part in ICL proved to be the final nail in the coffin. The stage was all set for IPL to emerge and kill ICL forever. Finally in January 2008, Modi was successful in giving a shape to his idea of a franchise based cricket league. The first auction took place on 24 January 2008. A total of 723 million dollars was spent that day and eight city based franchises were born. Subsequently, players from all around the world were auctioned. The first match of IPL took place in Chinnaswamy Stadium between Kolkata Knight Riders and Royal Challengers Bangalore on 18th April 2008. The rest as they say is history. Any cricket fan back in 2008 couldn't have imagined a scenario where cricketers will be auctioned live. A scenario where cheerleaders will dance to the tunes of fours and sixes. or a scenario where an australian will be giving an advice to an indian bowler how to bowl to an english batsman ipl made all these things possible so that's all for today guys don't forget to hit the like button as promised we will be back again with a new sports story very soon till then stay safe stay healthy and keep loving sports bye bye